Hi, welcome to Infusion Health, the podcast. I'm comedian Chris Patrick, a.k.a. Self-Proclaimed Power Man. <laughs> and I'm here with my co-host, and they've been other rage. Hey, guys. Now, today we got Terry Short. She's calling in from Island Park, Idaho. I guess it's by Yellowstone, which I haven't been out that way yet. And uh, we're talking about checking your tone and choosing choosing your word, choosing to be word wise. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but I'll let her explain it. So, Ray, should I just bring her on? Bring her on. Okay. Terry, welcome to the show. I love that. I would like to pause every time someone says my name. <laughs> Bring it on. I'm happy to be here. So, well, so we're talking about uh, choosing your words, or uh, uh, checking your checking your tone and choosing your words. Um, what what exactly? Can you can you explain to us what you do and how do, how do you teach that or whatever you what? what? <laughs> sure. sure, absolutely. Well, I wrote a book about this. Um, it's called The Words We Choose, Your Guide to How and Why Words Matter. Mm-hmm. And and so I end up coaching a lot of that. So I'm, I'm a leadership coach, but I, I don't have a client that uh, that doesn't want to uh, turn up the dolls on how well they communicate. So mm-hmm. it, I weave it in as I go, right? And um, then I, you know, I do a lot of podcasts and I do a lot of um, speaking gigs and such. And so for me, you know, the, the, the bottom line is that We've come to a place where we're going so quickly that it. it uh, I wrote the book so that it will take a pause and and contemplate the difference between what's in your head and what's in your heart mm-hmm. and what comes out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. So the idea is, you know, you can't see me doing this, Chris, but I'm like with my hands, head, heart, what comes out your mouth, right? Mm-hmm. And so the idea is to get the right alignment mm-hmm. between between those two, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I've, I've read stuff and I've. Um especially uh, coming from my background, uh, stand-up comedy, you know, we found out that words that ended with K were funny. Like if you, if you're, and this is, this is stuff I was. <laughs> <laughs> the words you shouldn't say? <laughs> well, no, 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 not, not just, not just that word, but certain, certain words, like when you're, when you're going to hit a punchline and you're going to say something, if you say, if you say this word, that this word's a lot funnier than this word, you know, because it, it has a certain, has a certain snap or certain something to it. To make the audience laugh, not just the f word. <laughs> Actually, I was I was I was semi a clean comic, but you know we we and and this this is stuff I read about and stuff you know stuff I read in writing in writing material. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm, I just can note because now I'm learning something. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> well, and, and you know, and the tone matters too. So let's talk about tone a second. Um, mm-hmm. The tone doesn't even have to be the, in your voice. You know, you're, you can set the tone by a little bit of eye rolling or sitting back with your arms crossed and, you know, all that, all the gestures and body language um, plays into setting the tone. Mm-hmm. And then there's the actual tone. And I, I have a sentence that I use, if I, if I may, as an example. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. So if you said this sentence, are you sure that's the best next step? So I just said that, like, are you sure that's the next, next best step? But I could you. say, I, yeah, I could change. I could change many of those words. So I could say, I could say, "Are you sure that's the next best step?" Or I could say, "Are you sure that's the next best step?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could say, "Are you sure that's the best next step?" Mm-hmm. And then I might even say, "Are you sure?" <laughs> yeah. Now I'm doubting you. Mm-hmm. That's the next best step. And the last one would be, "Are you sure that's the next?" Are you sure that's the best? next step Mm -hmm. so in all those in all those ways other than the first time that i said it i'm inserting doubt and and i'm questioning i'm questioning the the person that i'm speaking to right and maybe even being a little condescending along the way Mm -hmm. well even even like well well like you know when elementary school it's like if, if you say something Hey, can you hand me? Can you hand me that dumbass? You know, our, our, um, you, you know what I mean. Well, we know, we know. I don't know if you would say that to an elementary kid, but okay. No, but I'm saying, I'm saying. He's not a teacher. No, no, no. I hope no. He's not a teacher. But like, like, um, like, uh, can you can you hand me that? Can you hand me that? Here, give me that thing over here. Our, um, hey, can you please hand? Hey, can you hand me that over there, please? Thank you. You know. The the tone yeah. and how the tone and how you say it as opposed to getting it like, hey, can you hand me that? All right, um, can you hand right. me that, please? Well, it really reminds right. me of the game Utter Nonsense. Mm-hmm. And for the listeners that don't understand what Utter Nonsense is, you get a sentence, and then you get a card to flip over, and it says, "Say it like a cowboy. Say it like you're angry. Say it in a certain different tone." 
bed. Yeah, so that's a fun one. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm young. I don't know that game. But yeah, I don't remember that game either. I'm all over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could use it. I could use it in my, uh, you know, my speaking gig. I can, I can see you doing a, a tabletop um, activity with that. That's good fun. And I'm glad we're having this discussion because sometimes the way Chris says things, I'm like, it's not the way you said it. It's your tone. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, but, but your tone set me off. You right. know, and it and, either shut me down or got me yelling. <laughs> right. And, and Rach, I'd ask you then how much of that tone then might have been accompanied with a, a gesture or some sort of body language that screamed tone to you yeah. <laughs> without there being an actual tone like because that happens right that's yep. just sort of how we how we use our bodies we and we get in habits about that as well mm-hmm. and yep. when we're when we're really want to shut somebody down or shut down an idea we take a certain posture we take a certain tone you know we just it's, so it's we don't even know we're doing it but yep. oftentimes it's, it's unconscious right yeah well, well it's like you know one, one of the books one of the books that really really helped me um was definitely Carnegie's book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I've learned I learned a lot as far as uh, you know, uh settling people down if somebody's mad at you and all that. And if you when 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 somebody screams at you, you auto you automatically want to scream back at them as opposed to like l- looking at where they're coming from and looking at it and going, Hey, listen, I know I know you're angry, I know you're upset, but listen, this wasn't my fault. This is what happened, blah, blah, blah. And I found when I do that, a lot of people settle down and go, Oh, okay, okay, sorry I got mad, but hey, this is what yep. happened, but you know. Yeah, absolutely. So I referenced that book in my book, right? even though it's an older one. Mm-hmm. Um, I do reference it from the standpoint of influence. And you know, and I'll tell you a story. When I was in my early twenties, I managed a rest- very large restaurant, 182 seats or something, on uh, Pier 39 in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And so I, I didn't look like the manager because I was young. I was 22 mm-hmm. years old. Mm-hmm. I'd wear my hair in a bun, and I tried. The, the owner was like, "Try to look older." <laughs> I was like, "All right, right." Anyway, so upstairs there was a bar where people waited, and we had a PA system. We'd call you for your table, and so there would be. Um, the week where all the sailors came in and I forget what they call it now, but anyway, it could be a really rowdy place. Mm -hmm. And occasionally somebody would call and they'd say, Hey Terry, we have a, there's a fight about to break in, about to break out upstairs. Can you, can you go speak to that? All of my 22 years (laughs) of my hair in a bun, (laughs) (laughs) travel up the steps. And this is what I learned kind of to your point, Chris, I, first of all, I, I don't know where I got this courage, but I inserted myself in the middle of it. I got to just walk in between two big guys, and, that, you know, they'd be so taken back. They'd be like, who's the bun lady? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so they said, so the first they'd, they'd be a little disarmed because of that. And then I'd lower my voice. And, you know, they're yelling at the screaming. I'd say, just a second, I'm sorry, what, how does this, how does this start? What, what, what's the problem here? Hmm. And I, and I just, as I went lower, they, so it, it, it totally worked. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know where I got it initially, but I eventually ended up coaching sort of how to um, disarm people. And I had to do it more times than I care to care to recall and you know other people would say you know it's a matter of time before somebody takes a swing at you <laughs> yeah. but it never happened but yeah, yeah it is. so I was manipulating my presence and my tone to be heard mm-hmm. well I've had I've had situations too where I've had you know um I was working at a um at a at a bar and again we had the same situation and a guy um, you couldn't, you couldn't bring your, you couldn't wear caps. We didn't allow you having baseball caps. And, and we told a guy, well, you could put your hat here. And the guy stole his hat and went and worn. I said, you can't have it on. So I caught him twice. I said, you got to leave. And this guy just started going off. Well, you don't let me have my hat. And I sat there and I just looked at him and I didn't say a word. And then finally, when he was done, I said, listen, we were nice enough to let you put your hat there. You weren't. I said, listen, I've listened to you. Now you listen to me. He goes, no, I'm not going to listen to you. And he said, F you. And I said, well, you know what? We're done talking. You're not coming in. Goodbye. See you later. You know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you kept your cool. It kept yeah. your voice sort of a, you know, a low kind of monotone. And you know, mm-hmm. which in other words, you weren't mirroring his. That's part of it. Yeah, that's part yeah, of it. Is exactly. When we mirror and reflect back to the other person, then we're we're all in the same boat. Mm-hmm. So that so that tone makes a huge difference. Then there's the word choices, mm-hmm. right? And the one the, where I would go next with this is how we ask questions. Mm-hmm. So we're so apt to ask questions about that start with why. So I hope this doesn't trigger anything because I know you guys are partners. <laughs> but like, <laughs> why? 
why didn't you do the dishes last night? Yeah. <laughs> right? So we, when we say why about anything, we're implying judgment when we start with that. Mm-hmm. Right? Where so like going up when my kids were teenagers. So saying what prevented you from doing the dishes this evening, it um, opens it up into a conversation. It makes me... Right. It opens it like, hey, let's talk about this. Like, I noticed the dishes weren't done. Like, mm-hmm. what's up? You know, but, it, but when I go, why aren't the dishes done? Like, I couple the why with the tone. Yep. It's, we're going to a negative place. Yeah. Straight mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. So replacing why with what and how. And I guarantee you 90% of the time, and now that I told you, you're both going to go. One of you is going to go, why doesn't it go? <laughs> 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 you go, whoa, 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 reframe that. Because when you reframe it to what and how, it doesn't just serve the person you're speaking to. It mm-hmm. serves you, too. It, it helps you kind of step back. And this is being word-wise, right? Yep. You step back and you go, okay, wait a minute. Let me let me reframe that in my head. And, you know, I, I don't, I, I want to align with my intention. That's really what it's all about. Yeah. That's what I was saying, like, what's in your head, what's in your heart. I want to align with my intention in asking that question. And when you work towards framing it with what or how, you're going to do a better job with that. Mm-hmm. And not you're not doing yes no, right? Mm-hmm. Well, well. It, um, also, what what about certain words that that have more effect than than other words? Like somebody's done something for you, say, "Oh, thank you, thank you very much." As so, hey, thank you, I appreciate it. I found I've heard that if you say like I appreciate it, that that has a lot more impact than oh, thank you, thank you very much. You know. Well, that's 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 a step in the right direction. Here's how you go several more steps is. Tie it to something that the person values or mm-hmm. something that the person would be proud of. And so, you know, and a good common example would somebody works an extra shift or they stay late covering for somebody who called out or whatever, right? <laughs> so we can, say, we can say, thanks for covering the shift. Or we can say, hey, thanks for being such a great team, team player last night and, you know, extending your shift and such. So it's, 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 I really appreciate it. You're very collaborative of mm-hmm. you. Like I might weave in any one of the values that the company has or that the individual has. Because now you're like, you're connecting the person to why they're there in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like, that, I can't, I cannot stress enough the value of connecting to the value. And mm-hmm. and uh, it takes a second. It takes a second right. to just add instead of just thank you. I, lo- I love appreciate. I appreciate. I appreciate you doing this. It's a great representation of the teamwork that we endeavor to have here. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah. Ten more seconds. Mm-hmm. Right. So my question is for you, and I've mm-hmm. done it on the phone. In fact, recently my daughter just moved to college, and I was doing a group text with the kids. And um, me and my other daughter were her twin. We're getting along just fine, but she's Maxine is in college, and she did not understand what we were saying in the text. She thought we were fighting with each other. And and she's like, you need to move that over to a co- private conversation if you're going to yell at each other. And Liz came to me and she's like, well, mom, we're not yelling at each other. I said, you don't understand where she's moved. She's moved three hours away. She doesn't understand the environment that you're in right now. I said, one day we could really mess with her and get along very well, but act like we're fighting in text. (laughs) And she would have absolutely no idea. And she's like, oh, let's do that. And Maxine got so lividly mm, mad. She's like, "Mm," she put it in capital text. Move this to a private conversation. (laughs) Now she's yelling. Yeah, now she's yelling. (laughs) And, And me and Liz... FaceTimed her and we were hugging each other and Maxine's like, I'm trying to study right now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a great example, right? Of like, you got to know where the other person is and that we we go so fast. We don't always know that. And that, and you explain that, like you, you got that, that she was in a different, I don't mean where she is, where she is, but in the headspace, she was in a different headspace and was hearing it differently. And the same example happened with our kids. My husband and I still laugh about it. We, we can count on one hand the times that we raised our voices with our kids. Mm-hmm. And they're, but they saw it differently. And they say, we'd be talking about something in our mind, talking about something. And they'd say, stop yelling at me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <It's> like, <"What?" laughs> no one's raising their voice here. But they were just, they were anxious. They had 
something was going on and they were receiving it that way, mm -hmm. even though that's not how we were dishing it. And so that happens all the time. So it's a matter of that. When that happens and you're, if you're the person who is more self-aware and more um, in a good place, mm -hmm. then take a step back and think, what's my intention here? How can I help this? Just right. like you did, you mm -hmm. know, just like pulling it back together. Yeah. Well, in a, in a, and, and then, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, then they're just straight up words to avoid that are, that, you know, kind of set people off too, you know. Mm. I, I, I bet you if you say to your twins that you should do such and such, they, they bristle. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Should, should make them feel like they don't have the ownership. Mm-hmm. Well, well, like, well, like in a, like in a retail situation, you know, um, if you, if you've ever worked, if you've ever worked retail, you know, there's some mm -hmm. people, there's some customers that come in and they, they want certain things or they're going to, and, and they come in with this attitude, like, Hey, if I come in and I'm screaming and I'm loud and all this, I can get them to do this just to shut me up. Like, okay, okay, ma'am, here, here, we'll give you this. We'll just, just be quiet. But, and, but see, I've learned that they're going to do that. And you just keep, I'm just like, here, you want to go off, go off. Just keep letting them go off, go off. Okay. This is what we can do. The policy is this, 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 this. Well, I don't listen, this is what I can do. And nine times out of 10, I'm able to, I'm able to, um, to calm them down. I'm even, I'm able, cause I know, yeah, I'm able to deescalate it because I know, I know they're just coming in to scream just so they can get something free. And it's like, I know you're trying to get something free, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a jerk right. about it like you are, but I, I know what you're going to do. And this is, this is how I can help you. This is the best I can do. But I don't think everybody's coming in there for something free. Some people are just lividly upset about something and you need to know those words right. to deescalate. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But sometimes people That's like, People, oh, yeah, totally. People yeah, do it like, yeah, I'm just going to. I'm just going to. Yep, I get the Karen bill. Yeah, yes. I'm just going to go in there and just start screaming <laughs> just so they give it to yeah. me. It's like, well, that, that's not going to happen with me, you know. Well, yeah, yeah ma'am, I'm yeah. sorry this didn't work out for you. But here, this is our policy. We can't give you cash back, but we can we can take it back for an exchange. But that's our, well, I want, I want, well, you can talk to a manager, but they're going to tell you the same thing. Here, I'll get a manager. For, I'll be happy to get a manager for you, you know. Yeah, well, you just hit on the two main things to do in that circumstance. And one is to listen. Just listen. Hear them out. Like, wait, wait. what I hear you describing is some of them, it's like a fuse. It's eventually going to burn out. <laughs> it's yeah. like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and they get to the end of it. And it, particularly if they if they haven't startled you in any way, shape, or form. And so you're, you know, leaning in, listening, nodding your head. I hear you. I hear you. And eventually they, they it all fizzles out. And then you that's one. And number two is you tell them what you can do. Right. Mm -hmm. Only what you can do, you know, a focus on what you can do, not what you can't do, because then that rolls them back up again. Yeah. So I love that. I mean, that's, that's really good. Um, you know, not customer service, but a disgruntled customer <laughs> <laughs> handling, right? To, to yeah. listen as, as hard as it is sometimes, because it, it zaps your energy. So I mean, that's another thing I like to think about. You know, when you think about two magnets, if it's two of the same charge, they repel each other, mm -hmm. right? So if if you have this negative energy you're coming in, you want, I think you want something free, and I get an attitude about that too, and now we both got this negative energy, we're going to repel each other. Mm -hmm. And if the opposite, if I can stay in my centered space and let you do your thing, run it, you know, let everything run its course, let you speak your piece and listen to you and maintain a neutral position, then there, I won't be repelling you, and I'll, I'll pull us together to, to the right conversation. Yeah. So my question is, uh, and I don't know if you've seen it, but I see people in business, social, church, whatever, you know, try to choose their words in a better way than they do with their family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you let your guard down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You let your guard down and you're, you know, and, and yeah, I think that's a really good point. So that's, so when I, when I wrote the book, I wrote the first whole chapter is about yourself. Mm -hmm. And sort of because it starts there, that internal narrative, you got to get that straight. And I only, I listen, I've listened to a couple of your podcasts and I got to mm -hmm. tell you, the one with the gal, um, Anjua, Anjua, with okay. the dance, the inspiration change, inspiring change with the dance and at the men's club. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. great. Anyway, she starts talking about the gremlin. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. You know, like that internal narrative and stuff. So anyway, I digress. But I wrote the first chapter all about you getting that internal narrative, which I call your personal podcast, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're the producer, director, you, you decide what goes on every day in that, yeah. in that narrative. And then the next thing is with loved ones, because not only do we let our guard down and do we 
to it, you know, speak perhaps differently, not choose our words well, but we also have a history. Yeah. And so we have this history of things that trigger us. And, you know, you might, somebody might say the same word to you out in the workplace that a sister says, and it's, it's a trigger. And you're like, yeah. oh, wait, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so you have to accommodate for that. You have to accommodate for the, the history that's built and, and lean in even closer and try to uh, peel back the layers of what's really going on. Mm-hmm. And I think that takes an enormous amount of self-awareness. I do um, an overview of how to how to improve upon all the key components of emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. The very first and I think most important one is um, self-awareness. Because once yeah. you get that nailed, the other things fall in behind. Mm-hmm. Well, what um what are what are some ways to um as far as tone and all that if you're going like for a job interview? Mm, great question. Um, well, I, the number one thing to do for the job interview is prepare, prepare, prepare. So you know, have your own questions ready. Know the values of the organization and you know the mission, vision, and values. Weave them into when you're telling about your experience in the past and how you leverage whatever collaboration or mm-hmm. whatever their one of their values might be and and keep your tone. The thing about the tone in an interview, it's interesting that you ask that because I've recently been coaching some people for interviews, is this is when you kind of do want to mirror the person. You know when I said earlier you're you know, you don't want to take on their negative energy. Mm-hmm. But when you're in an interview, you don't want to be the exuberant, bubbly person when that person is very subdued. You're, you're going to right. give them a headache, <laughs> right? <laughs> so this is the circumstance where you, you do want to sort of reflect back the, the same energy that they have. And I mean, I'm a high energy person. So if I get in with the, somebody who's like, oh, no, 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 you know, the ER person, mm-hmm. that, that's mm-hmm. going to be a challenge for me. But I'm going to know right away to meet somewhere in the middle because my energy is likely to rub this um, you know, introvert or upset or angry individual the wrong way. Mm-hmm. So it's a mirror situation. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing too. Sometimes you got people who are who are re- really introverted and trying to get trying to get information out of them. You know, um, I know sometimes people have said, you know, sometimes I mean they're interviewing a person. This person looks like and it's like this guy's not saying anything. So they they try to find a common ground. Like, yeah, like the what stiff. do you? <laughs> Like, well, try to find a common ground. Like, do you like to hunt? Do you like to just, mm-hmm. to, you know, just to get them to open up? You know, And I think it's important that yeah. we re-highlight, you know, study before the interview. Yeah. yeah. You know, and there's YouTube videos Absolutely. on questions that, you know, they would ask. But, you know, also, I think it's important to sometimes know your kids going for that interview and know your kids' energy. Because yeah. if Denzel went for your interview, we would definitely be making them st- hint study. But if mm. it was Maxine, we'd be like, Maxine, you got this. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, it just reminds me when we took Denzel's college per- pictures compared to when we took the girls' college pictures. I mean, graduation pictures. Graduation pictures, yeah. <laughs> Denzel is a really interesting subject. Yeah, it was very, very, very stiff. Very, very stiff. Very yeah, stiff? Yeah, very, very yeah. stiff trying to trying to take pictures of him. We couldn't get him to loosen up. Yeah. Well, and you know, so so hopefully the interviewer is going to be good enough to be able to ask what and how questions. Mm-hmm. You know, to start with what and how that aren't yes, no. And I, I do the same thing with um in the book with talking to your kids, and you know, you're in the car driving home from school. If you ask questions that allow them to answer yes, no, or fine, mm-hmm. then you're setting yourself up to not learn anything, yep. right? Yeah. So when you really get down to it and really train yourself to ask questions and start with what and how, then you're going to get more information. And and you're going to, you're the interviewer in a conversation, whomever is going to present themselves differently. Another, and really another good example is um, I used to train physicians, I coach them in communication skills. Mm-hmm. Here's, you've had this experience. You go and see the doctor. They're very, very busy. They have seven minutes for you. Yeah. And you get to the end, they go, da, 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 da. do you have any questions? Just like that. And yeah. they're, they're, even the tone the tone and the way in which the questions ask, yep. what you're hearing is, please, God, don't ask any. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, that's how that's how that c- comes across to you. Mm-hmm. Whereas when the physician says blah, 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 about your diagnosis or you know this interaction and then pauses, 
and says, what questions do you have for me? Right. Mm-hmm. Assuming that you have them. That's a whole other ballgame, mm-hmm. right? It's just a whole other interaction. Absolutely. That is uh, important to change. Mm-hmm. What, what I've what I've what I've found out and listening to people who who have hired people is that um, before a word is even spoken, their first impression of you. Um, I I do uh, part time security, and there was a guy who came in. Our boss was saying there was a guy who came in. He had piercings all over the place, and um, ears, nose, everywhere. And he took one look at the guy. He goes, well, "What would you do if I sent you out on a job?" He goes, "Well, I could take these out." He goes, "Well, you should have did it for this interview, you know." And didn't even interview the guy, but that's that first appearance. You know, you, how, how are you dressed? How are you, how are you dressed? Are you, how are you sitting? How are you dressed? How do you look when you come in there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And because I, I think, what is it? 10 seconds? Yeah. yeah. Like their first impression. Yeah. And yeah. And that's so that you don't even have the opportunity then to speak your piece, you know, and, right. and say what is, what's important to you. And, you know, ask the right questions and such if you're shooting yourself in the foot by how you look. Mm-hmm. And that's think, a choice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think the mm, 10 seconds also has a lot to do with when you're de-escalating from an mm, argument with a friend, significant other, family member, um, when you're trying to de- de-escalate your children. You know, I know in the past, Chris has separated the two kids and he's like, okay, calm down, breathe, what do you need to say? What do you need to say? And just depending on what state of mind they're in, they can choose to start getting along. Or Chris can say, now you're sitting on the couch. Right. Start it over again. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So time out. Time out. And then, well, they get older. Time out means a different thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And here's, here's something you might look into. So I love the work of a um, guy named Marshall Rosenberg. Um, he is, the organization is the Center for Nonviolent Communication. Mm-hmm. So he was event, he was like he was like going to Israel in the middle of you know in the seventies in the middle of all these the huge conflict mm-hmm. and trying to de-escalate things. And now all of the de-escalation work has been distilled down, and the Center for Nonviolent Communication has boiled it down to basically four components of, the, of such an interaction. So, so the person who wants to speak their piece or is upset says, here's what I observe, what I feel, what I need, and what I request. And they have, so that's the framework. And there's mm-hmm. more to it. But thinking about even teaching kids how to speak in those terms, and mm-hmm. I coach clients how to speak in those terms, it's a way to, to de-escalate and then also simplify and be certain that you're saying your piece, that you're really getting across to the other person what's important to you, mm-hmm. and what you observe, feel, need, and request. Those are the, the key components, and I, I think it's a brilliant framework, super simple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the thing with, and that's the thing that we, like we've been talking about a certain, you know, as far as using tones and using things in your language. I mean, you, um, it comes back to the old saying, you know, you can get more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. You know, it's just how you how you present yourself and how you talk to people, you know, and it's and it's very interesting too to when you when you are talking to somebody to think about the words you're saying and how you're saying them and how how can you get how can I get this person to do something if if I'm always like this is crappy, this is crappy as opposed to, hey, you know what, good job. Thanks a lot, you know. Right. Yeah. And and so here's what that requires. A little bit more of a pause. We we just we operate so quickly. I mean, I talk fast. Two of you both talk fast, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, but that's okay. It works for me. Um, I, I feel that we're with, with the information overload and you know the phones and the text and everything that's going on in social media. We don't pause long enough. Right. So we're, right. we pause longer, and then we listen better. So actively listening, which you know requires no distractions. No alerts on the phone, that kind of thing. And so I, I think that's more of the ticket to communicating well mm-hmm. at this point is that we are we practice the pause and we will actively listen. And then we're set up for choosing the tone and the words and such. So it's almost as if the, that those are the precursors. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been <laughs> this has been a <laughs> definitely eye opening experience. Uh, you know. Um, as far as people out there choosing your words, right? Um, and you, you said you had a book. What um, what book do you have out there? So it's called The Words, the words You Choose, 
your guide to how and why words matter. And you can find it on all the, you know, Amazon and all the different places. But also my website, which is thrivingleadercollaborative.com. And Rach, that will be... She already gave me everything. It's in the show notes. It'll be in the show notes. Okay, well, thanks a lot for this conversation. It's definitely an interesting conversation. And I'll let Rach close us out. All right, you guys. Come to an end again. I want to thank Terry for joining us. And, you know, whoever you're talking to, take that moment to reflect on yourself, connect your mind, connect your heart, and bring it out your mouth. Have a great one. Take it easy.